Welcome to your writing lesson today. Let's begin with your learning target. I can write using reasons to support my opinion. Let's review what an opinion is. An opinion is what you feel, think, or believe about something. And an opinion is what helps you make a choice. I tell you this every lesson, but I want you to remember that an opinion is how you think, feel, and believe. And it does not have to match your best friend. It does not have to match your teachers. But in order for other people to believe what you think, feel, and believe, you've got to have supporting reasons, okay? And this is what affects other people's choices. So the more supporting reasons that you have, um, the better that your opinion is going to be believable um, or accepted. Um, today, we're going to read a mentor text called, The Best Thing to Do at Recess is to Play Tag. Now, um, as I read this passage, I want you to think about this question. What is the author's opinion in this piece? Okay, so I'm going to read all four paragraphs. When I finish, we're going to discuss um, the author's opinion and um, the reasons that support her opinion. Okay, so the title is The Best Thing to Do at Recess. Do you ever get tired of swinging on the swings at recess? What about playing on the monkey bars or sliding down the slides? I get bored with all of those things at recess sometimes too. I'm going to tell you why the best thing to do at recess is to play tag. Playing tag at recess is so much fun because it's a game that a lot of kids can play with you. Some games at recess only let you have a few players. When you play tag, you can have as many players as you want. This makes it so that everyone can play. Since there's no limit on how many kids can play, you don't have to say no to anyone who asks to play. Another reason why tag is the best game to play at recess is that you get a lot of exercise. Schools have recess so that kids can get their wiggles out. Playing tag at recess allows kids to do that. It doesn't matter if you are the one being chased or the chaser. You are running a lot. Sometimes you might also squat down or jump over something to get away. That's a lot of exercise for kids at recess. Next time you're on the playground and have nothing to do, Ask some kids if they want to play tag. You will get lots of exercise and have a lot of fun. That's why tag is the best thing to do at recess. Okay, I'm going to grab my highlighter. I'm going to start with, um, we'll do yellow. So what is the author's opinion in this piece? Remember, we've already learned that a good opinion writer states their opinion in the very beginning, in the introduction or the lead. So let's go back up to the first paragraph. This is where their opinion should be. Um, do you ever get tired of swinging on the swings at recess? Well, that's a lead. That's a question. That is not their opinion. What about playing on the monkey bars or sliding down the slides? Once again, that's part of the lead. That's, what's, that's asking the question to get us interested in this passage. I get bored with all of those things at recess sometimes too. I'm going to tell you why the best thing to do at recess is to play tag. That's her opinion. Her opinion is... The best thing to play at recess is tag. It's also part of the title, boys and girls. And um, she continues through paragraph two and paragraph three, giving reasons to support her opinion. Now, let's go ahead and identify. I'm going to change colors to green. Let's identify the reasons. What reasons support her opinion? Because she could just say tag is the best thing to play at recess. But if she doesn't tell me why, then I don't believe her. She's not going to convince anybody of that. So let's read um, paragraph two to find her first reason. Playing tag at recess is so much fun because it's a game that a lot of kids can play with you. There it is right there. Reason number one, it's a lot of fun because a lot of kids can play it. Um, then she goes on to explain how some games at recess only have a few players. Um, you have to tell people no sometimes because there's nobody, there, enough people cannot play. So her first reason is that it's a fun game because a lot of kids can play with you. Okay, that's one reason. Let's go to paragraph three. Now here she starts with another reason why tag is the best game to play at recess is that you get a lot of exercise. Her second reason is that you get exercise. So the first reason is it's fun and a lot of kids can play. Her second reason is it's exercise. And then the whole paragraph three explains um, how it's good exercise. You're running a lot, you're jumping and you're squatting down. And that's a lot of extra recess, um, extra exercise for kids at recess. So both, I want you to pay attention to these reasons. 
they are, there's two things that I, I want to point out to you because today as part of your lesson, you're going to go back and look at the reasons of your, about your favorite candy and why that's your favorite candy. And we're going to make sure they are good reasons because there are two common mistakes that people do when writing their opinions, okay? Um, the first thing I want you to notice about these opinions is that they're, they're very different. One is about a lot of kids playing in paragraph two right here. A lot of kids can play it. And then in paragraph three, it's a good exercise. They are, those reasons are not the same. The first reason is a lot of kids can play and it's fun. The second reason is it's, you can get a lot of exercise. They are totally different. So one thing I want you to do as you're writing your reasons, which you've already written, today we're gonna go back and look at them and make sure they're totally different. If you wrote two reasons that are pretty much exactly the same, then we're gonna rewrite them because that's not gonna convince anybody. You need to have two totally different reasons. The second thing that I want you to pay attention to is um, to the reasons is that it always is constantly reminding me of her opinion. Um, sometimes when we start writing, we get off, um, we just start writing and we get off subject and the reasons sometimes don't really support our opinion, okay? So let's look at some examples. I want you, that's the two things I want you to look at. We're going to make sure our reasons are different and we're gonna make sure they're clear and constantly remind me of the, her opinion. She keeps telling me why these are reasons um, tag is the best. She keeps going back to that over and over again. So let's look at this. Number one, all reasons in your opinion writing should be different. Do not keep rewording the same reason over and over again. Look at this example right here. This person is trying to convince someone that they need a dog, okay? And look at her. Th look at their three reasons. Um, I should have a dog because I am responsible, okay? There's one reason. I should have a dog because I always do my chores. There's her second reason. I should have a dog because I do what I am told. That's the third reason. Now, let's think about these reasons real fast. I should have a dog because I'm responsible, okay? That's a good reason. You can tell all the right ways you're responsible um, in that section. But look at the second reason. I should have a dog because I always do my chores. Isn't that another way of saying you're responsible? If you do all your chores, aren't you sh telling that you're responsible? Yes, those are those are very similar and those, are, those reasons are not different, okay? Look at the next one. I should have a dog because I do what I'm told. Well, if you do what you're told, aren't you being responsible? If you do your chores, aren't you doing what you're told? They all are very similar. They, these are all ways of sh showing that you are responsible. They are not three different reasons. They You're rewording the, um, the same reason over and over again. I should have a dog because I'm responsible. I always do my chores. I always do what I'm told. That's the same thing. So this person needs to go back and, and revise or edit reason number two and reason number three because they're, so, they're just like reason number one, I'm responsible. They're showing ways if you do what you're told and you do your chores, then you're responsible. So um, these are, this is not a good example of reasons. So as you're working today, I want you to go check out your reasons of your, about your favorite candy. Make sure they're different. Um, read them to someone at home. Make sure they're totally different. You don't wanna keep rewording the same reason over and over again. Let's look at another um, example. Okay, all of your reasons should be clear and they should constantly remind your readers of your opinion. Every time you state a reason, you should go back and tell them why you believe that. Sometimes when we're writing, we start using reasons that sound good, but they don't really support our opinion. And that gets our writing off track and that starts getting our writers confused. And when and those reasons that don't support your opinion, they're not going to convince anybody to believe your opinion, okay? Let's look at this example down here at the bottom. This person's opinion is, I should have a dog. Well, then they said, their first reason was because I once had a cat. Okay. Now, you tell me what does I had a cat have to do with I should have a dog? Does that support the opinion? Does that go together? No. Just because you had a cat doesn't prove to me why you should have a dog. That doesn't make any sense. But look down here, um... This is a better way of saying that. I once had a cat and I took good care of him. I would take just as good care of a dog. Now that supports wanting a dog. If you tell me I once had a cat and I took good care of him and if I have a dog, I'm gonna take just as good care of him, then that does support your opinion of should having a dog. Um, but just because you say I once had a cat, that doesn't really go. 
You've got to tell more. A lot of us want to um, leave out a lot of details. Don't leave out details. I want you to tell um, everything that you can to make me believe you, to make, if you're trying to convince someone um, that you need a pet or you want to go on a special trip, or in this case, in our writing, we're writing about our favorite candy. If you're trying to convince someone to go to the store and buy this candy and, that, and uh, why it's so delicious and why they need to spend their money on it, then you've got to be able to convince them, okay? So um, let's look at my draft. Um, th now, we've already written our um, strong opinion statement. We've already written our lead and our introduction, and we've already got two reasons why. Now, I'm going to start with my introduction. Um, do you like the taste of sweet, ooey gooey caramel and sour green apples mixed together? then you would love caramel apple pops. In my opinion, caramel apple pops are the best candy ever, okay? So remember, you're, you don't put your reasons in your introduction and your lead. That goes up at the top and that's separate. You're gonna keep your reasons um, a, a secret until you get to the body. Now, I've got two reasons here. As we're reading my reasons, there's two things I want you to look out for. Are they different? Do they constantly remind me of my opinion? And my opinion is that, they, that caramel apple pops are the best candy ever. So that's what we're looking for. Are my reasons different? Are they clear? Do they match my opinion? Do they support my opinion? So let's look at reason number one. The first reason I believe that caramel apple pops are the best is because they have yummy caramel on the outside. All right, so my first reason that I want people to believe that this is the best candy ever is because of the caramel on the outside. Okay, so my whole first reason is gonna be all about the yummy caramel on the outside. Let's look at reason number two. Another reason is because they are seasonal and are only sold at one time of the year. My second reason is because they're seasonal. So I've got one reason over here saying you should try it because it has yummy caramel. And I've got another reason over here saying you should try them because they're seasonal and they only come out at one time a year. Are those two reasons different? Yes, they are totally different. Caramel and seasonal have nothing to go, to, nothing to do with each other. Very seasonal. Okay, so check, got that part. Now I want to make sure that they constantly remind you of my opinion. So my opinion is they're the best candy ever. The first reason I believe that caramel apple pops is the best is because they have yummy caramel on the outside. So in the very first part of that reason, I said, I believe that caramel apple pops are the best because, so once again, that refers you back to my opinion of why they're the best. Another reason is because they are seasonal and are only sold at one time of the year. Now, this reason needs a little bit of editing because I did not refer to my opinion at all. So I'm going to click in here. Let's say another reason I think caramel apple pops are the best is because they are seasonal and only sold and are only sold at one time a year. So now both of my reasons refer back to my opinion and we are ready to add more details. So now I want you to head over to Seesaw. You have been writing in on writing notebook paper and I want you to go revisit your reasons. You're not writing new reasons. You've already written these reasons. I want you to go back to your, your um, opinion essay that we've been working on, on your notebook paper, and I want you to look at your reasons. Read both of them. Read them to someone at home. Read them out loud to yourself. And I want you to think, are they different? Are they teaching or are they, are they telling about two totally different reasons of what, about my opinion? Then the second thing I want you to do is to read your reasons, and I want you to make sure they always constantly refer back to your opinion. If you don't mention your opinion, if they don't have anything to do with your opinion, then you need to edit and revise them just as I did on my draft, okay? Now, I know you're not typing your essay like I am. You're writing yours on paper. Just cross it out. Draw arrows. Don't erase because sometimes when we erase, we forget what we had written down or we forget what we want to say. So what I like to do is just cross, do one cross through, draw an arrow. This is a draft. It's going to be messy and that's okay. We're going to fix it later and make it into a nice um, opinion essay, but right now we're just drafting, okay? This is just, sometimes we call it a sloppy copy. It's, it, there's going to be mistakes in it. There's going to be line scribble. There's going to be arrows drawn. So that's what I want you to do today. If you get stuck, give me a call. Happy writing.